Continuing our tour of California's infamous San Andreas Fault, this time we're going to take you on an urban backroads tour of the San Francisco Peninsula. Our tour starts near Stanford University in Palo Alto and ends where the fault plunges into the Pacific Ocean near Daly City. Unlike other trips we've taken along the San Andreas, the landscape on the San Francisco Peninsula is mostly covered by vegetation. It's also in a very urbanized and built-up area. This means that traces of the fault will be hard to see. Regardless of the fault's visibility from the ground, throughout this tour, we're going to get some help from Google Earth to help you see where the San Andreas has left its mark. Just like with any of our tours, I'm going to give you a route to take over a series of roads on the peninsula. Since the fault is located in the hills to the west of the urbanized areas such as San Mateo and South San Francisco, we'll be traveling on various back roads and side streets, plus a freeway or two, to see places of interest along the fault. You're looking at a map of the Bay Area. This yellow shaded line marks the path of the San Andreas Fault along the San Francisco Peninsula. In case you're not familiar with the fault's movement, these are the directions the land on both sides of the fault is slowly moving. While we have the map zoomed out, let me point out this branch of the San Andreas. This is the Hayward Fault. As our trip unfolds, you'll see from the ground and from the aerial imagery how these two faults shaped the landscape of the Bay Area. This other line marks the route that we'll soon be taking. We're going to travel from south to north. So, let's start our trip near Palo Alto on the western edge of Stanford University just off the 280 freeway. We'll head over to a park in Portola Valley for our first stop. That first stop is the Windy Hill Open Space Preserve. After taking a short walk, you can see several traces of the fault. Then, we'll drive through a residential area closely following the fault, but unfortunately, we won't see much of the fault here because it passes under private property. After traveling through the residential neighborhoods, we'll pass over the fault and climb the hills pushed up by the fault to the west and join Skyline Boulevard, which is Highway 35, and follow it for almost the remaining portion of our route. While traveling along Skyline Boulevard, you'll have opportunities to look out over the San Francisco Bay and the fault line below. This will also give you a good sense on how the San Andreas Fault was responsible for shaping the entire landscape of the San Francisco Bay Area. Incidentally, Skyline Boulevard roughly follows the San Andreas all the way south to a small town named Loma Prieta. You probably have heard of that town before because, as of 2019, that was the name of the Bay Area's last big shaker, the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. After Skyline Boulevard descends from the hills, we'll make a few stops along the long skinny body of water named Crystal Springs Reservoir. This drinking water comes from Yosemite National Park in the Sierra Nevada mountains and is deposited in this long narrow depression gouged out by the San Andreas Fault. Next, we travel north on the 280 freeway for a short spell, pass by another lake, this one actually called San Andreas Lake, get back on Skyline Boulevard and follow the fault into the ocean. After turning left off Skyline Boulevard and cross Highway 1, our trip ends up at Muscle Rock for a short walk along the coastline. Here, we'll examine the twisted rocks, giving us clues as the place where the San Andreas plunges into the Pacific Ocean. 
Before we take our land trip along the fault, let's use Google Earth to take a quick flyover of our trip. That way, you'll get a good idea of how much the fault influences and has shaped up the peninsula as I mentioned earlier. We all know where the San Francisco Bay Area is located. This is the peninsula. Here's the map you just saw of our trip overlaid on Google Earth. All right, let's zoom into this view on the south side of the bay. Here's Silicon Valley and San Francisco is located up here. Do you see the fault? It's right here. See how it dives into the ocean near San Francisco, then comes back on shore near Point Reyes. Well, here's a look at what the San Andreas Fault created at Point Reyes. It created this long skinny bay. You can get a closer look of Point Reyes by taking our tour of this area. Look up our trip called A Visit to Point Reyes. All right, so let's get going. Our trip starts at the Alpine Road Portola Valley exit on the 280 freeway. So, no matter where you are in the Bay Area, get to this exit. Reset your odometer to zero, then turn south. Continue south on Alpine Road for 2.9 miles. At the stop sign, turn right. You are now on Portola Road. Continue until your odometer reads 3.8 miles, which is your first stop. Look for this driveway on the left, which is the entrance to the Windy Hill Open Space Preserve. Park your car here and go on the short walk to the small pond, which is really a sag pond created by the fault. If you don't know what a sag pond is, look for our tour of the San Andreas Fault near Wrightwood in Southern California. This tour gives a better explanation of what a sag pond is. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Hopefully after watching the entire tour, you'll be inspired to take the same trip for yourself, or at least you'll understand more about the relationship between the mighty San Andreas Fault and the San Francisco Bay Area. Have a good trip!